I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music and part one of our interview with Pablo Cruz. They've just released a brand new song called Breathe. A lot of classic rock bands, well, a lot of musicians in general, are releasing songs that's really needed now to help people get grounded because there's so much chaos in the world. Part one of our interview with Pablo Cruz. What you gonna do, like I was telling you, Dave, that, and I'll tell the other guys, we'd be in high school and we'd pass by each other and we love Pablo Cruz so much, we'd go dang, 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 when we pass by each other in the, in the hallway at school. <laughs> That was kind of like our sign. Okay, let's start there. Where'd you come up with that? Like, what, what inspired that? Uh, you know, we just, we used to jam a lot, you know? I mean, that, we were a jam band originally. I mean, I mean, sometimes we would just jam on riffs forever, you know? <laughs> it, it was like, what about writing a song? Ah, oh, let's just jam some more. <laughs> so, so, you know, the, the riffs just came out, you know, out of playing. So that one just came out of playing it. Well, that's Amazing. classic. Everybody Everyone knows. remembers that. You you do that to anyone, they'll know what song that is. You know, what's funny. I live in oh. Nashville part of the time. My wife's from here. And uh, she knows pretty much everybody in town, uh, you know, as far as all the musicians and singers and stuff. And, and it's really interesting to meet these really iconic players. But they all have a great respect for Pablo Cruz. I. I met a, a guitarist named Brent Mason, like one of the first call guys in this town. He, he's, he's always been just unbelievable. He plays stuff on the guitar that just isn't possible. And, and Jamie, we were, we were at a restaurant. I said, I think that's Brent Mason. She goes, yeah, so well, you want to meet him? So she brings him back to the table and the, to introduce me. And the first thing he says to me is, I've always been a fan of yours. But it's because of those records and those, those solos and those riffs, you know. But that made me feel pretty good, yeah. Now, what you're going to do was the was kind of, it took, it took a while to get to what you're going to do. It was sort of probably two other completely different arrangements that led to it. We had this one song that was on our first album called Island Woman. The keyboard riff on that song, I started playing it again and singing some, you know, some phrasing with Dave. And we originally were playing it with the keyboard, but that, that being kind of the, the, the base of the tune and, and you know eventually Dave changed the arrangement and which was great and, and let the guitar the riff take over but we wrote that in a hotel room up in, in St. Louis right in front of the arch and I remember we were we were on the road and when band was uh, you know starting to pick up some momentum it was before they hit but we were we were out on the road with the Doobie Brothers pretty much came up with most of that song right there especially the hook and all. What was your biggest celebrity moment where you met someone you, 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 that made you maybe nervous when uh, maybe when you were starting off? Or? Oh, that's easy for me. It's probably the same for Corey. Paul Anka, we were working with Paul Anka at one uh, moment and we were in Vegas and, and Frank Sinatra was playing uh, at, at one of the clubs in Vegas and Paul said, you guys want to go see him? And, yeah, sure, we do. you bet. So we had, you know, we had great seats and it was just... <laughs> It was Corey, me, and Paul, and I think our manager. I don't know if Steve was there. Was Steve there? Corey? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the whole and, band. And, I mean, we were, you know, we were close enough he could sweat on us, you know, but it was unbelievable. And it was a great show. And it was Frank, for God's sakes. Then after the show, Paul says, Hey, you guys want to go say hi to Frank? Yes. You know, it was like, wow. So yeah, we. It's like meeting Jesus. Oh, yeah. my God. So we go knock on the <laughs> stage door. The door opens, and it's freaking Frank. Come on in, boys. He's pouring himself a little cocktail. Yeah, he says, "You guys want you don't want to well, you want a drink," and and we sat down and had drinks with Frank. Oh, and cool. he knew who we were. He knew that we had played up the strip a month before, and he said, "I wanted to come and see you guys, but I was working that night." And I mean, yeah, that was pretty total, awesome. Total wow, music, great. man. Well, wow, you know, man. also that show it wasn't a show. We we were doing a benefit, and Paul Anka called me and said. I said, hello, and he goes, hi, Corey, this is Paul Anka. And I thought it was somebody screwing with us because we had a publicist that represented him and represented us and, and Burt Backrack and a bunch of people. But there was early in, in, you know, this guy representing us, and all of a sudden Paul calls and said, listen, I want you guys to come to uh, Las Vegas and do my telephone. He said, uh, I love the band, and I, I, I want to send my plane for you guys, and we'll just have a great time. So it was just like it was like one of those – you know, kind of, you know, uh, Cinderella moments, you know, where you're just like, this is really awesome. So we fly to Vegas and we get there and Paul starts introducing us to people that are on the show. And that one one day we met Dean Martin. We met Paul Anka for the first time. 
We met Milton Berle, Michael uh, Jackson. We were in the rehearsal. It's, Uncle it's Milty. Caesars, and Michael Jackson does the moonwalk in his rehearsal. And we're just a bunch of, you know, knuckleheads sitting in the audience. <laughs> and it was just, it was amazing, really. And it was just, it was like a walk through the stars. And then, you know, we hung out with, with Anka that night. And, you know, the ironic thing is, is that I, Paul Anka lives right across the street from me now. Is that <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, it's like I, I've known him for, for all those buddy. years. We've stayed in touch and stuff, but it just was was amazing. This house was for sale, and I, and I saw it sold, and I asked the realtor, and I, I said, who's moving in there? And she said, Paul Anka. I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. But you still live beside Paul Anka? Oh, well, yeah, right across the street. In fact, if you want me to bring him in, I can. <laughs> You know what's funny about that? (laughs) You know what's funny about that initial call from Paul? Because right after Paul called Corey, you know, they agreed to do the telethon. Then Paul called my house, and I was out at the beach and at at Stinson, and the phone rang. I I picked hello, hello, Dave. This is Paul Anka. Yeah, right. (laughs) And I I hung it up, and then it rings again. Dave, don't hang up. This really is Paul Anka. And then he explained the whole telethon thing, but oh my God. Okay. But that was this, this publicist, David Guest. I don't know if you know who David Guest is. He, God bless him. He, he passed away, but he was, he was really an amazing publicist. And he put all kinds of different people together in his, that were part of his roster. And that, that happened again. I got a call and it was like, hi, Corey, this is Bert Backrack. <laughs> and I'm like, you didn't hang up on him though. There's right? no way this is Bert Backrack, was by <laughs> the way probably my favorite writer of all time, and and uh, you know, and we got to meet him as well, and you know, it's just kind of a fun time. Larry and Robbie, go ahead, Robbie. We went to the uh, pre grant party, and uh, Corey and Paul showed up. No. Um, and then next thing I know, Melissa shows up and Bert back, and I. You know, Paul Anka, first of all, I was, I met Paul through Corey and I was just kind of like, uh, you know, here's a living legend. I was just pretty, pretty speechless. So what does Corey do? Hey, Robbie, come over. Let's do Ocean Breeze for Paul. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it was, it was one of those moments, but we, you know, we've been drinking wine and we were having a ball, Paul, yeah. like in a really good mood. And I said, you know, I want you to hear Robbie sing. And that's like really, you know, it's kind yeah, of that song's a deal, but he was, he was like, he was totally cool with it, you know? He was he, totally he cool. Was, you know, but it was just him and me and you and... I don't know, John or a couple. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. That was huge for me. You know, even on the road for me, yeah. meeting David Gilmore and to get you know compliments from him was pretty amazing. Yeah, there considering was, you were doing his part. Yeah. Yeah, he actually said to me, "We were playing the London, uh, the O2 in London, and it was a big, you know, big after party. A lot of people were there, a lot of celebs and stuff. But I just first time I got to meet him because he sat in with us that night and did perfectly numb and." I walked up to him and I said, you know, hey, hey David, my name is Robbie. It's such a pleasure. To, you know, I can't tell you how honored I am to do, to be singing your parts in this song. And he goes, oh, really, man? He goes, you have a great voice. And he goes, I thought that was me up there all the time. You know, and was, <laughs> That's great. So, you know. That's fun. Was, so so are he, were he and Roger, like, still buddies? Are they buddies? No, they're not. I wouldn't say buddies, but they're, they're, they get along. They're amicable, you know. So he'd show up at some of the shows, though. Yeah, he, it was, uh, he agreed to show up uh, and sit in yeah so he came two nights at the o2 he first night he was just listening to the show and then the second night he sat in with us and, what and year did. would that have been uh 2012 i think okay yeah yeah because now the pe- picked up. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead Tom. Oh, pe- david has put recently some of roger's stuff up and everyone's going oh my god they love each other again and i'm going and they, will, and they always want me to write on this stuff. And I'm going, what, what do you want me to say? You don't have any concrete stuff. They just put a thing on. I don't do rumors on my website. Like, come yeah. on. No. Yeah, but even on stage at the end of the night, you know, when, when, um, when David was with us, he got on stage and was, was, it was a pretty surreal moment because I was like, it was uh, one of the background singers, Kip Lennon, myself. Then I, and to, my, and to my, um, r- my left was Nick Mason, David Gilmore, and Roger Waters, the three living members of Pink Floyd. And I, Kip's like, dude, you believe this? You know, or like Yankee Stadium or something. He's just like, or I sorry, oh two. Yeah, it was, it was, and you could yes. tell when he introduced David, uh, David Gilmore. Roger welled up. He got really emotional. So they're still, you know, they they get along as far as I know, and I don't think they're buddies by any means. But you know, yeah, yeah, it was cool, cool moment. <laughs> Larry, you got one? You know, meaning Hanks, of course, right? 
hero. That was all the people that came with him was like Peter Scolari was there, and I was like the first take. I always watched with those guys in Bosom Buddies when I was a kid. So I was totally, I mean, this guy who's just thrown in this movie all of a sudden. And then Tom Hanks comes up to me. He's got Peter Scolari with him. He goes, I hear you do a good Captain Kirk. <laughs> so I had to go into the wrath of Farrakhan. You can't come in here and talk to me like that. You know, because <laughs> Kevin Pollack was on the set too, right? And he did it. So I think Mark Wilson, the music supervisor, said, Larry, so I'm like making Hanks and Scolari laugh, and I'm going, I'm just this guy. They're the geniuses that I, I can't believe they even give me this opportunity to do my one good impression. <laughs> but anyway, there's everybody showing it. I don't know. I, you, we get kind of starstruck, you know. But it's what like, about when we met Will Ferrell? That was pretty cool. And John C. Where was oh, that? you guys, yeah. That was pretty Incredible. cool. Where was, he you made everybody stuff. feel pretty relaxed too, you know. It wasn't like I mean, um, Mike Myers when I was in the uh, Austin Powers movie. I was an extra. I was an evil henchman in the in the movie. So <laughs> there, but, but during you know during the breaks on set, he was uh, we were in the volcanic lair, and he was fat bastard, you know, dressed up as fat <laughs> bastard. We were just talking. He was so cool, but he, he was always in character. But we, he's a big hockey fan, and so am I. So. We're talking about hockey, and it's like, wow, Mike Myers yeah. is like the coolest dude. <laughs> but I'm, always never surprised get... when, I'm always surprised when they have the rollout. Uh, like the, I don't know what those people that do the top tens all the time. They get like a gazillion views. They're always they always put Mike Myers in in the in the the hardest to work with category. And I'm going, it doesn't seem like that. Wow. I've never, but I've never worked with him. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe he is on other levels, but he was super, super nice. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Mm -hmm.